In this lesson, we will be discussing filters. But first of all, we need to understand what a filter is. A filter is a graphical operation that can alter the look of an image. We can make an image look brighter, darker, change colors, and so on. As an example here, I have imported an image that I have downloaded online so that we can see how these filters can be applied. If you are also looking for images to use for free that are license free, this is a very useful site that will help you find any type of image royalty free and usable for any type of project. All you need to do is select the image that you are interested in and then download it for free. And if you want, there is the possibility to show gratitude to the artist behind the image who in this case is this person up here that you will find on the top left. This website is called pexels.com. It is free to use. All you need to do is type it into your search bar online. By clicking up here on the license tab, you will see here what are the options and what is allowed. So as it says here, all photos and videos on Pexels are free to use. Attribution is not required. Giving credit to the photographer or Pexels is not necessary, but it is always appreciated. And you can modify the photos and videos and be creative and edit them as you like, which is what we are going to go and see today. What is not allowed is listed here below. So if you are interested, you can look into this website and download everything that you are interested in. Now that we have our image imported into our program, we can go ahead and see how filters work. We will find filters in the filter drop down menu up here on the top left corner. You will see that by clicking on it, all of these different options will appear and we will slowly go through some of them. The first option is adjust. By opening this option, we will see all of these various options like contrast, burn, color balance, cross channel adjustment curves, desaturate and so on. And again, each filter option that we open here will also have various options on the inside. There are different ways that we can apply filters to an image. The first one is direct filtering. So choosing one of these, for example, desaturate. And as you can see, it takes away all of the saturation, all of the color inside the image. Direct filtering is a destructive method as it modifies the original image. But as we have this open, we can see how the desaturate filter works. You can work on the lightness, on the luminosity, this different option of luminosity, you can select average, minimum, or maximum. So notice how all of these different options don't change the saturation of the image, but only change the way the image is desaturated. So if mostly white will be visible in the image or mainly the darker shades. Once you have decided the way that you want your image to be filtered, you can select OK and the filter will be applied directly to the image. I personally do not advise this method to add filters to images, but there are other methods that are less destructive to the original image. And that is by using filter masks or filter layers. So let's go see that now. Going back to the original image, if we want to apply a filter to an image, so for example, use a filter layer, we can go down here in our layers panel, click on the little arrow here below and select add filter layer. Once we select that, Krita will ask us what type of filter layer we want to use. So we can use the same one that we tried directly on the image to desaturate. We can try the burn option and then modify amount of exposure here in this bar. We can also try color balance and in color balance, we will find all of these different options. We can work on the shadows, on the midtones and on the highlights. So for example, if we wanted our shadows to be more red, we would drag this option to the right towards red. 
So notice now how even the shadows, even the darker parts of the image are a reddish tone, matching our background more. If we wanted, for example, the highlights to be closer to blue, we would drag this bar all the way to the right. And notice now how all of the bright parts of our image where the light hits have turned blue. Once we have chosen the type of filter layer that we want, we can click OK. And notice here in the layers panel on the right, now we have a filter layer right on top of our background image. So this makes it a less destructive method since we can always switch off the filter layer. And in this case, it shows up filter layer one with color balance. So you can see intuitively that in this case, we can add multiple filter layers and they will always affect all the layers in the background. So let's make another example with filter layers. We can switch this one off and now let's duplicate our background by selecting this icon here, which is duplicate layer. And let's alter the copy. To see how filters can really affect the look of an image, let's separate these elements in the image in different layers. I want to separate the sky and put it in another layer, the main character and put it in a different layer, and also this red wall. So let's go ahead and use our selection tools to do so. We can hide the background for now, and while we are on the copy, let's use the contiguous selection tool and select the wall. Now, as we mentioned in the previous lessons, this tool isn't perfectly precise, so we can go in and continue selecting more parts, like so. So now, if the wall is perfectly selected, what we can do is select Ctrl-C to copy it, and then Ctrl-V to copy the background just on a new layer, like so. So now we have the wall in a new layer. We can select Ctrl-Shift-A to deselect, and let's go back on our copy of the image and select now the sky and this part of the wall. So let's take our contiguous selection tool and let's see if we are able to select this inside part of the wall. So now that we have this part selected, again, we can select on our keyboard Ctrl C and then Ctrl V and it will create a copy on a new layer. So let's deselect the background image and now we can see that we have this part of the wall selected. So now we will try selecting this, the sky. So now let's go in with our contiguous selection tool, select the add option and tool options and try and select the sky. So again, Control C and Control V to put it into a new layer, and we can see it like so. Control Shift A to deselect, and now all we need to do is select the main character here in the foreground. And again, Control C and Control V to have him on a new layer. Control Shift A to deselect. And now, just to make things a little bit clearer, let's rename our layers. So now we can try using filter layers on the various layers. 
The filter layer that we created previously, as you may remember, made the whole image change. And this is because it had one layer underneath. But the interesting thing about filter layers is that it will affect every layer that it has below. So in this case, it is affecting every single layer. Now, if we are to select our filter layer and move it down, notice how now it isn't affecting our wall. We can move it down again. It's not affecting the inside of our wall either. And then we can move it down once more and it is only affecting the main character. So filter layers will affect every layer that it has below. So this way you can really regulate and choose what you want the image to look like. So for example, if I only wanted it to affect the sky, I could move the filter layer one step up and then I could move the character also above the filter layer so that it won't affect the character, but just the sky. To change the way the filter layer looks also, all we need to do is right click on it, scroll up to properties, select it, and now we will be able to change the way it looks. So for example, we can change the highlights, make them more yellow, or make them more green, or more magenta, and also more red, or more blue. You can also work on the mid-tones like so and just play around as much as you want. It is a very easy way to make a surreal effect in images, but obviously you can use it in a very realistic way if you use these nodes a bit more simply. So if we just wanted it to look a bit colder, for example, we could just slightly move the highlights towards the blue here to make it look like a slightly colder day so it is a lot more delicate or we could make it look slightly warmer by moving the mid-tones for example more towards a yellow and then the highlights also move them slightly towards the red and the yellow. So it can be a lot more delicate and a lot more realistic if you use these options in a very delicate way. So we can click OK and this filter has been saved like so. Another option that we have is to create a filter mask. A filter mask is useful if you only want to affect a single layer. Instead, the filter layer is useful if you want to affect any layer that is below like so. So if, for example, we want to have a completely different effect only on the sky, we will select underneath here, add filter mask. So notice how the filter mask has appeared right below the sky, so it will only affect the sky. And now again, we can choose what type of filter adjustment we want to use. Since we have already seen color balance, let's see some other types. We can see burn, for example. And again, you can choose if you want to affect the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights. So again, we are working on the sky. So with the shadows, we can do this, for example. Midtones also, we can bring this up or bring it down and the highlights also we can bring this towards the right which will bring the highlights down or bring it to the left which will brighten them up. We can also use dodge. Dodge also we can work on shadows, midtones and highlights. So if we select shadows and we drag this and drag it back, notice how that will change. Let's bring it back to the mid. Midtones again, we can move this and also the highlights, we can move them like so. Then we have the HSV and HSL adjustment. This option works on the hue, saturation and lightness of the image. So you really have the whole options here. So we can change the hue, so the color like so. So we can make it a very unrealistic shade, so like a purple. 
Then we can choose the saturation of the hue so we can make it a lot stronger, a lot more intense or bring it all the way down and desaturate it. And then we can also work on how dark or how bright this can be. So we could have it here, for example. And then obviously, whatever we do, we can go back, we can click reset and so on. So for example, here, if we select OK, now the filter mask only affects the sky. And if I were to turn on again the filter layer, it will affect everything. It will affect every single layer underneath, also the filter mask. So notice how now the purple has become warmer. We can change this in two ways. We can move the sky to a higher position in the layer panel. And so the filter layer will not affect the sky and it will only affect the layers below. Or we can simply turn off this filter layer and only use filter masks for each layer. If we want each layer to have a different effect and a different color adjustment, for example. If, for example, we create a filter mask that we particularly like, and maybe we spent a lot, a lot of time going through all the various adjustments and we don't want to go through all of that again, but we want to apply it to another layer, what we can do is create a group. So for example, if I wanted to apply this filter mask also to the character, I can move the character to the top, then I can group the character with the sky, like so, I can right click and select quick group and now I can select the filter mask and drag it up and drop it on top of the group. So notice now how this filter is affecting the sky and also the character. But if you do want to have a color adjustment that affects multiple layers, it is more advisable to use a filter layer. That way you can just position it on top of the layers that you want and it will affect all of them below. So let's go ahead and see what other filters we can use. And we can add another filter mask to the red wall. So let's select the arrow here and select add filter mask. So while we are here, we can see the other options. So we have invert, they will invert the colors. So from red, it brought it to this aqua green color, which is the exact opposite. We can choose levels. Levels also works on the pixels. So we can see at the moment on this layer that we have a little amount of dark pixels, black pixels. We have a lot of mid-tone pixels and also a good amount of light pixels, white pixels. So if we were to move this, notice how now the amount of darkness is more compared to lightness. We could also move this towards this side, towards the left, and we will have more light pixels and less mid-tone pixels. We could also move this all the way to the right and see how now we have this long bar of black. That means that we have mainly black pixels now in the image. We also have color adjustment in here as well. It works on a RGBA channel, but we can also choose if we only want to work on reds, greens, blues, and so on. In this case, it will work on all of them. And we can just move this around and it will change the appearance again of the layer. We can add nodes and move those around. So what we just looked at now are all under the adjust option, but we also have artistic. So for example, we can select half tone. This window will open with all of these different options. We can select screen tone, pattern. So in this case, it selected the full layer, and now we could also add a pattern to the wall. If you remember in the previous lesson, we also created our own pattern and we will be able to find it here by scrolling down like so. And now we can add the pattern to the wall or choose any of the other ones that are 
three sets inside of Krita. And the interesting thing here is that then we can also choose the colors. So we can also transform it. So we can change the way the pattern looks. We can scale it up or scale it down. And then there's also the post processing option. So you can choose how intense it can be like so. And again, we can work on the opacity of the foreground and the opacity of the background. We can also choose the colors here of the foreground. Here it is mainly black. So for example, we can choose a different color like so. Select OK. And notice now how we have completely changed our wall only by using filter masks. We can leave this one like so for now and try and add a filter mask even to this other part of the wall. So we will select on wall one, select also our arrow here and add another filter mask. So now let's see the index colors. And here we can also work on lots of different options. We have bright, light, base and shadow. So these are the colors that are inside of the image. So for example, if we were to choose and change one of these, maybe like so, see how it will change slightly the tone of the inside of the wall. Again, we can try changing the base. Let's select blue and notice how that changes slightly. We can also change the bright part. And let's choose a completely different color to see if it makes a stronger difference. And exactly like so, it does. And then we can also see these other options. We have oil paint, which will make this look like a painting, like so. We can see pixelize. So obviously, it will make it pixelized, as you can see here. And again, we can change the width of the pixels and the height of the pixels. And then we can go into the blur options. So there is classic blur. So we can change the options here and notice how much it blurs those shadows out. We also have Gaussian blur, which is the most common one. Again, you can make it stronger or more subtle if we move it towards the left and also motion blur you can see how that moves like so the next option we have is colors maximize channel and minimize channel so let's select ok and let's try applying a filter mask to our main character here so let's select the character select the arrow and add filter mask so now not only will our character be affected by the filter mask that we created previously for the group, but it will also have this extra filter mask. So you can always add more masks and more filter adjustments one on top of the other. So let's see now the edge detection. So we can select that. We can choose these different options and notice how gritty and texturized it is. We also have Gaussian high pass. So if we move this along, it will change it like so. And then height to normal map. And this will change it completely. It really works on the textures of the layer and let's see enhance so we have gaussian noise reduction so it will make it softer and again we can alter this by moving these bars to the right or to the left sharpen again all of the details have been brought more to light on sharp mask which we can modify always in these values here the last two that we will see are map so we have gradient map and we can move this like so we can also see this fong bump map also which will apply this very bumpy texturized filter on top of it all and again here we can change how much it reflects the ambient the diffusion and also specular and shininess exponent.
And the last option we have is other. So random noise like this and also random pick. And again, we can adjust all of these values like so. So these are all of the filters that we can choose. You can really try them an infinite amount of times. You can have fun and change up an image from what the original is to a completely different image like so. If I were to switch all of these off now, we can see the difference with the original. So we started off from this and we slowly reached this completely different image. This is the last feature that I will be discussing in the Krita software. So this will be the last lesson of the course. I hope you have enjoyed all the lessons and learned the basics and had fun following along with all the various tutorials. Again, if you have enjoyed this lesson, make sure to leave a like. If you have any questions or any suggestions, you can leave them in the comment box below. And if you are curious to see any future courses or if you want to see any of the past courses that we have on our channel, make sure to subscribe and that way you will always stay updated. I hope to see you in the next course. Thank you for following along.